everyone, welcome to your second flipped video for our population unit. We're going to continue with our discussion of how population is measured and analyzed, but this time we're going to be taking a look at specific indicators that geographers use, in other words, terms. Um, and this is, these terms will allow us to both characterize the, the population and overall simply study its demographics, the character, the, which is a term to refer to the uh, characteristics of the population and the population itself. First term is crude birth rate, or the CBR. The crude birth rate is the number of annual, which means yearly births, per 1,000 people. In general, this is just an indication if you were looking at a group of 1,000 people, if you were to sample 1,000 people from each country, this would be how many people from that 1,000 were born in the past year. That's how that statistic, what that was referring to. What that actually shows, showing us is truly it's a measure of change. It's how fast a population is changing in a given place. So if you peek at the map on the top right in our choropleth map, you can see that in sub-Saharan Africa we have the largest rate of change. They have the highest CBRs of anywhere in the world. Um, and, with that, and what that shows us, though, let's not get this mixed up. Remember that we talked about the most populous regions of the world as East Asia, Southeast, e South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Western Europe. Remember that the crude birth rate is an indication of change, of how rapidly an area is changing, as opposed to areas that already have a lot of people in them. So our crude birth rates are going to be highest in Sub-Saharan, and largely in Sub-Saharan Africa. And that's just the same map, just a different way of uh, showing that. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum is our crude death rate, is the number of annual deaths per 1,000 people. And this is going to be a similarly in a general indication of how the population is changing in a country. We're going to use that, of course, to figure out how, the extent to which the population is decreasing. Those two statistics together can help us understand the overall population change, how many people are being born, how many people are dying. The, the decrease in the crude death rate the decrease in the crude death rate is the true indication of why the world's population is changing. In fact, let's break this down. Put on the left-hand side of your notes, why is the world's population changing or uh, increasing so much? Why is the world's population increasing so much? On the right-hand side, please put decrease in crude death rate. What I mean by that is that if fewer people are dying on Earth's surface, that means that there are more people alive at any given moment in time on Earth. In general, this, of course, is a good thing. We want people to live like nice, long, full lives. But what it also means is that we're continuing to put enormous pressure on our Earth to provide not just for people of, you know, two generations, but now we have people who have their great-great-grandparents alive. At the same, you know, when a, a great-great-grandchild is born, their great-great-grandparents are alive. That's a lot of generations of people on Earth's surface at one given time. It also helps us see, if you look at the map here, the areas with high crude death rates. Multiple factors account for this, access to healthcare, of course, being significant. It's also the, um, an indication of relative to the population. If there are many people who are, if the population itself is not increasing, um, then the crude death rate will be higher. And I'll explain that when we get to our population pyramids. So there's our crude death rate, average number of deaths per 1,000 people. When we combine the crude death rate, how many people are being born in a given place, with the crude death rate, how many people are dying, that's called our natural increase rate. Crude birth minus crude death logically will tell us the, how many people are being born in a given place in a given year. So the way we actually calculate the natural increase rate is, the, as I just said, crude birth minus crude death divided by 100. Now here's the challenge or the problem with that. So once we've got natural increase rate on the left and the definition uh, on the right, please put problem with an, an IR on the left. That does not help us account for, for migration. So for example, let's go back to this map for a minute. We can see, I already mentioned that Sub-Saharan Africa has significant uh, population, there's a very high CBR. If we combine this with the crude death rate, the natural increase rate is the best way for us to understand how a population is overall changing in a given place. Are they, is their population increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? You can see here in the, uh, mo, the vast majority of Africa, their population, the natural increase rate is high. Their population is growing. However, what this doesn't account for, these are just strictly births and deaths. So if we were to incorporate migration, which we will later on, then we'd have a much more accurate understanding of how the total population of a given place is changing. In, um, in a global scale, so our, our scale of analysis, if we're looking at this globally, the natural increase rate is about 1.2%, which means that there are 80 million more people added per year. That, that's absolutely extraordinary. 80 million people um, are added to Earth's surface each year. 
The highest uh, natural increase rate we had was in 1963 at 2.2%. That's a reflection um, for a large extent of the, the baby boomer generation, um, the people born after World War II and through the Vietnam War. Um, but that, that has since come down largely. The large-scale distribution of birth control is partly to explain that. But in general, 1.2% natural increase rate is, is tremendous when, if, to add 80 million people to Earth's surface each year which helps us understand the direction that we're heading in to see how we're straining our world's resources and how that natural increase rate is going to affect our economies, our transportation, our businesses, everything else. Um, and as I mentioned already, almost all of the population change that's happening in the world due to natural increase, not migration, just due to natural increase, people being born and people dying, almost all of that population change is happening in the least developed countries of the world which is um, truly significant. And that's, and that, what that again means is that the, the population is increasing the most in the places that are least able to provide for those people. So in our globalized society, it makes more sense now why the businesses is so advantageous for them to go to these lesser developed countries where people truly need these jobs. It certainly makes that story of globalization even more muddied because we have these multinational corporations coming into places where population is booming and jobs are needed, but those people are not offered the same quality of life as they would have in other places of the world. So this is all connecting back to globalization, or go to population and globalization. Um, another statistic that helps us understand how population changes and how we look at we measure that population change is something called doubling time. Now, doubling time means the time will take for the population to double. Seems pretty logical. With the current natural increase rate of the world, the world's population is due to double in 54 years. That's, that's pretty unbelievable. If you consider that the population, that in, conceivably in both of our lifetime, yours more so than mine, I suppose, um, that that means we could see our world's population double. I mean, that's just astronomically. That, that, that is an enormous number of people. Um, so that's, that is the reason why so much of our world's population current global affairs are focused on meeting the needs of population change. Um, one thing about doubling time, it's a little bit counterintuitive. You may want to write this down. Putting on the left-hand side of your notes, if doubling time is high, if doubling time is very high, then that means we have slow population growth. Think about that. If it's going to take a very long time for the population to double, in fact, I'm going to write this as we go, so we write this down. So if high, if the doubling time is high, then the uh, area is experiencing slow growth, right? So if it's, it takes 200 years for the population to double, they're experiencing slow growth. If doubling time is low, and I'd put that phrase on the left-hand side, then the area is experiencing high, Ooh, look at my terrible typing, experiencing, uh, oh, geez Louise, experiencing, there we are, um, rapid growth. So low a very low doubling time is actually an indication that if it takes eight years for a population to double, then that's a very, very, very rapid population growth, which you can see on the right-hand side there. Look in, if you look at Africa, the doubling time um, going all the way down to Europe, look at Europe would take 240 years to double their, their population. That's a clear indication of being a most developed country where they have low population growth. Um, another important statistic, and this is different than crude birth rate, is total fertility rate. So let's explain what this one is. Total fertility rate is the average number of children per woman that well, one woman would have over her lifetime during her childbearing years, which are generally defined as 15 to 49. And of course, you, there are exceptions to these rules, but these are just averages. So it's the average number of children per woman that, that, that she will have in her lifetime during her childbearing years. The reason why this helps us also better understand the characteristics of a population is because it tells us, it shows us um, the number of children being born, and it also helps us understand um, the level of development of a given place. In the U.S., there's the, on the average is 2.1. So yes, of course, you can't have 0.1 children, right? But the total fertility rate in that way, um, it's, it's a, again, this is an average, and we'll talk about the rest of it in a second. Italy, 1.3. If then this helps us see too, this is the if we look at total fertility rate, it's also a good indication of how a population is changing over time. If two people, it takes two to tango here, if two people on average are only bearing 1.3 children, that means that the population is decreasing. You can see in the U.S. it's generally, based on that, that total fertility rate of 2.1, generally the population is being maintained, two people, 2.1, again, on average, children. In Nigeria, you can see a total fertility rate of 6.0. That's tremendous. That, there's lots of factors that are going to indicate this. 
In the way that CBR cannot, this crude growth rate, total fertility rate can help us to, uh, ref can reflect the socioeconomic conditions of a country. If people, you and I, we already talked about this, we are fancy, we want, we want clothes that are different every day, we want to eat different food, we want to go to the movies, we want to do, we want to go to college. These are things that are incredibly expensive. And children in more developed countries, people are less likely to have many children. In lesser developed, in more developed countries, in lesser developed countries, people tend to need more children for to work. So the need for workers, additionally, the, the, sadly, the health care uh, of many lesser developed countries is such that people won't necessarily have access to the to the medicine both during pregnancies and afterwards that would ensure that the child makes it past uh, their first birthday. We'll come back, back to that for infant mortality rate. But if you look over on the right-hand side, the world's total fertility rate, you can see on the whole the world's total fertility rate is going down. Um, again, another uh, reflection of access to contraception and um, changing role of women as well, as more women work and get take on leadership positions. But this uh, total fertility rate differs from crude birth. Crude birth is just sort of the general indication of how many p children are being born on the whole. Total fertility rate individualizes this to a single woman and helps us better demonstrate the socioeconomic conditions of a country. Um, there's also a condition that we refer to with population that's called zero population growth. This is a state of population stability where crude birth actually equals crude death. So very logically, the number of people born is uh, the same as the number of people who are passing away. We're going to work with these. We're learning these statistics so that we will, be, we will better be able to read that what's called a population pyramid right there. But it went, generally, if you look at this population pyramid, on the, the brown indicates uh, men, the women, the um, blue indicates what did I just say? Brown indicates men, uh, blue indicates women. If you see the percentage of the population, so if you look at the bottom, um, for this given place, this is the population projection going all the way forward uh, into 2104, which is a, a for an NDC, 2101 for an MDC. If you look here, that the bottom, that this population, that only I'm going to use this pointer here. You'd see here that only that about 2% of this population is from between the ages of 0 to 4. Then if you look all the way to the top, then you can see, generally speaking, there's almost no change in the people who are being born versus the people who are going to eventually pass away in this society as they get into the upper ages, from 80 and 90 and above. That's an indication of zero population growth. Now this is where we're going to combine total fertility rate with zero population growth. So in order for zero population growth to occur, in order for a country to be totally stable, the total fertility rate is actually 2.1. That doesn't seem logical. It seems like two people would have two babies. So 2.0 should be the total fertility rate. Two, two born, two die, two born. That seems, seems like game, set, match. But unfortunately, not everybody lives long enough to get to that childbearing age of 15 to 49. So in order to account for the people who are not, uh, who don't make it, and by that people, I'm saying women, who do not make it to age 15, who do not live to age 15 to actually be accounted into the statistic, zero population growth actually occurs when the total fertility rate is 2.1 or below. So that means that this woman theoretically could have, again, there's no such thing as 0.1 of a baby. These are averages. That that would be a 2.1 or below for a total fertility rate. That would indicate zero population growth. Which means then if, if TFR, if total fertility rate, is 2.2 or above, then that shows us that this population is growing. Two people had an, um, 2.2 babies or above is an indication that the population is growing. The world average for the total fertility rate is 2.6 children per woman. So on the whole, we see that, that that statistic alone, if two people are producing more than 2.1 children, then we have an indication that the world's population is growing and continues to grow. That's that 80 million people that are added to Earth's surface every year. The total fertility rate average in Sub-Saharan Africa is 6.0. So again, an enorm enormous, um, enormous difference between the global average. And again, this is just another statistic. This is exactly this supports what we discussed earlier with natural increase rate. So you can see this is uh, this this here shows us the uh, total fertility the map of total fertility rate around the world which is very, very, very similar to the map we looked at earlier with natural increase. In fact, you can go back to compare them if you see fit. I think this is our last statistic. Yep, okay, the last statistic is infant mortality rate. Infant mortality rate is the annual number of infants out of 1,000 who are born who die before their first birthday. Much like total fertility rate, infant mortality rate helps us understand the socioeconomic conditions of a country. The largest infant mortality rate in the world, which is just um, truly horrifying if you think about it, is just is Afghanistan, which is 121 children do, who are born do not make it to their first birthday, um, which is just astronomical. 
Sudan is 55, uh, the United States is 6. This can also be affected, um, these statistics can also, also fluctuate significantly based upon global events. So Afghanistan, as you well know, has been facing tremendous conflict um, in, the, in the past seven, well, really long time, but most recently in the last 50, 10, 15 years. Um, so these can also be affected by these global, global events, but is also an indication of the access to prenatal health care. That's pretty much the single most important thing that will um, dictate the health of a child is the level of care that a woman receives, medical care that a woman receives while she's pregnant, which is known as prenatal care. Alrighty, those are our statistics. Here are your analysis questions. For, econo for the questions two and questions three, I really want you to be as specific as possible. For social challenges, I'm talking about anything that's related to the people, um, housing, jobs, education, housing, education, transportation systems, political systems, any of those things I'd like to fall under for question number three. All right, see you in class.